Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, and I am here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up, hoes? We are here to talk about Van de Pump rules. Yes, bitch. Which is heating up, mm-hmm. which I thought was pretty good this week. Yeah. I, I was entertained. Me too. Before we get into it, we do have to remind you, however, to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words. We have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize for that. So mm-hmm. if you are sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster. Honey. <laughs> but if you're not sensitive and you're here to party, welcome to this dumpster. Yeah. And if you are ready to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party is mm-hmm. and the real fun and the real craziness is. And all the content. Yeah. That you can shake a stick at. Yeah. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and to comment and share and subscribe honestly and truly. Yeah. It really does help us to grow very slowly on YouTube, <laughs> but that's okay. We're still growing. Yeah. And I'm grateful. So thank you in advance. Thank you. Uh, okay, we already have to uncensor. Yeah. Back from uncensored. <laughs> that was so filthy. Wow. Please forgive me, patrons. Go to Patreon, though. Patrons understand. If you want to hear it, because we can't talk about this you shit on YouTube. You probably don't want to hear it. No, <laughs> you probably, probably it's really gross. It. Let's get into Vanderpump rules. Now, I, I do understand that a little bit of information came out in the last week because as we know yeah sheena in the last episode Uh uh-huh uh when they were playing never have i ever over at ariana's house they asked a question about never have i ever had a threesome or a foursome with two guys whatever she ultimately raises her hand and then clarifies and says that she was in an orgy type situation with an A-list celebrity. Uh And she says, you know, my body was a wonderland. Alluding to John Mayer. Correct. (laughs) And so... (laughs) And so John Mayer allegedly came out and was like, yeah, I don't even know Sheeta. I've never fucked her. I would never touch her with a 10-foot pole. Ignore those rumors. It didn't happen. I don't want anything to do with her in current year of our Lord 2024. Absolutely the Mariah Carey meme. I don't know her. Yeah. I know her. (laughs) Who's that? So here's the thing. I think he's lying. You think he actually fucked Sheena? A hundred percent. In an orgy. John Mayer back in 2008 (laughs) was an absolute himbo man whore having sex with everybody. I do not put it past him. And he's also not somebody who strikes me as being very respectful necessarily of his partners. I could be wrong. Maybe it's because he called Jessica Simpson sexual napalm, which I think embarrassed her. Although I feel like that's a bit of a compliment if somebody's calling me sexual napalm. But he kind of talks out of turn. I don't know. I think the right thing would have been if he had had sex with her to say no comment. Oh, yeah. I guess. But he didn't. He's like, I don't want to have anything to do with her. <laughs> I think that's hilarious, though, honestly, yeah. because Sheena's so fucking narcissistic and self-centered and being like, oh, yeah, I had an orgy where John Mayer was there, but yeah. I didn't touch him at all. Like, that's probably what happened. She probably was there in adjacent, the room. Yeah. yeah. In a big group with sex this sort of a situation. Sex thing, and she's like, oh, my God, I had an orgy with John Mayer, but you really fucked a bunch of randos. He was like drugged out. Yeah. Didn't even know you were in the room. <laughs> yeah. He's like, who is this woman? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. What she's talking about. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm wondering, too, if he's also denying it because she's having such a fall from grace Mm. in terms of how the audience is viewing her. And like, nobody is buying into the Lala and Sheena support of Sandoval. Right. Everybody is seeing through it. So they're getting an interesting edit. Yeah. And maybe John Mayer is like, yeah, I don't want to align myself with that. No. Absolutely not. That's hilarious to me, though. Yeah. I mean, if he's telling the truth and he's like, no, I never touched her and she's lying about it, that's even That's funnier. even cringier. That's that cringier. That is so hilarious, especially with how she's so desperate for fucking Dancing with the Stars yeah. and, and anything. being a celebrity. Anything. And being a, a somebody when she's a nobody. Well, she's a somebody. Not really. Everybody's a somebody, Beatrice. Well, yeah. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, sure. But, you know. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm judgy because I hated Sheena this episode. Yeah, she was really terrible. And she's been trending toward 
terrible the entire time. But like in previous seasons, I have been more team Sheena than not. Mm -hmm. Like not always, but like I have kind of liked her and she's been the underdog. Yeah. Kind of on the outskirts of the of the group. But this season has been bad for her. And this last episode, I was like, oh, fuck no. Poor lady, you're 38 years old. Yeah. And you're out here bullying girls. And I don't really care what Joe has done. Joe right. might have made a mistake. Joe might be complicit. Joe might know things. But like to gang up with like four or five other women and talk shit about Joe with an earshot, like grow the fuck up, Sheena, I and know. all of you girls. Seriously, I was so surprised about that mean girl shit because I know you told me historically all of these girls on VPR from prior seasons have been mean girls and bitches and all that stuff. And I'm like, well, I haven't seen it in season 10 and season 11 with my limited knowledge. And now I'm seeing it and I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. they suck. I hate that mean girl energy. Yeah. Get the fuck out of there commenting about how what she's wearing and wearing a hat. Like who the fuck cares? I would like you to try and take the hat off my fucking head Seriously. and see what happens with your face. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be good for you. Like, don't nope. touch me. Mm -mm. Like, you can say what you want. First of all, that's a very audacious of you to comment on what I'm wearing and what I'm doing in a room. But like yeah. to put your hands on me and take my fucking hat, we're going to have a physical altercation and you're going to have a problem. Facts. Yeah, that really got me heated. Me too. Grow I was like, the that fuck was up. fucking rude. But like in the flashbacks, mm -hmm. when you're seeing Katie yeah calling sheena a whore right and kind of the slut shaming that she used to do and the way that she used to come for lala yeah and sheena so what do you think of that oh yeah total mean girl energy like katie seems like the she kind of wants to be like the queen bee of it all like the the i don't know the mean girls in um the show mean the movie mean girls yeah. like the blonde chicks and stuff like trying to be like i run the roost i'm the fucking head bitch i'm the prettiest one regina like, is her name yeah, regina? I regina i don't know <laughs> i've never watched I, it i watched it like once sorry regina george right yeah. regina, regina george, george. Yeah. yeah no she she kind of strikes me as like that kind of a person and i don't like that i don't like any of that isn't it weird to be that kind of a person at 38 actually you know yes. i don't know that katie is like a Regina George. I think, again, we have to remind ourselves that this is taking place, like what we're seeing on film is taking place like three months after the scandal of it right, all. Right. It's also taking place within months of Katie and Schwartz separating and ultimately divorcing. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's normal that Katie would be in her feelings around that and not want to hang out with Joe and feel like Joe betrayed her. But I was watching The Vile Files this week and Katie and Dana, they have a podcast together called Disrespectful, I think. They were on and I was actually listening to Katie and Katie was talking about how, yeah, like when I was younger, I did a lot of shitty things. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people in this friend group that did terrible things and we admit that. But just because we don't want to sign off at it now, like because I'm standing against it with Tom Sandoval, just because I did it in my past doesn't mean I can't stand against it mm. now. Everybody gets older. Yeah. We all mature. Of course, I'm not going to want to make the same mistakes I made when I was in my 20s. Why don't I have the space to change and evolve? And why aren't you changing and evolving? Right. That's a really good point. See, and she says things like that. And I'm like, oh, you're cool. Like you're actually kind of growing up a little bit and you're trying to be a mature woman and stuff like that. I just don't like the whole vibe of like all these girls when they get together. Yeah. They just get really fucking mean and gossipy and like... There's no trust. There's no loyalty to anybody. It's like kind of wild. Like, Which Lala calls out. Yes, sir. In the last does. episode, she's like, I got to go. Like, there's no transparency. I don't know who y'all are. I got to go back to my baby. Which is kind of interesting because, I mean, hasn't she been kind yes. of part of that? So I'm like, uh, of okay, kind of hypocritical, but whatever. Turbo hypocritical Lala, yes. Whatever. But she's, you know, on her sober journey and she's working on herself, just kind of like Sandoval. <laughs> I do think Lala's working on herself. She is, yes, but... I think that she goes back and forth yeah. from her old nature into her new nature that she's trying to create for herself. Yeah. I do have some grace for her. I just think that... Um, I just think that she's really loud about what she thinks is right and what is wrong. Right. Meanwhile, she does a lot of wrong shit. Exactly. She should have more grace for everybody else. Yes, she should. But I mean, I did enjoy her comment at the end being yeah. like, all y'all are full of shit. Yeah, this is crazy. This is a shit show. Yeah. And Goodbye. Like, that's the obvious, girl. We've been watching it forever. Yep. They've all been full of shit. Well, let's get into the episode. All right, bitch. When we start off at James and Allie's house, this is just like a non sequitur. He's picking out her outfits and 
he dresses her and he like irons her stuff and like does her makeup and stuff for her, which I thought was really cute. And he talks about how he's going to be DJing at Hotel Ziggy and he's super excited. Mm -hmm. And then we go over to Sandoval and Ariana's house. Billy shows up. Ugh. And I'm like, Cloud Goblin. Totally, right? Yeah. You can totally feel that from, from Billy. It's kind of cringy. And um, she totally wants to fuck Sandoval. Yeah. That's like the vibe. Again, I say there are rumors that they have actually already fucked. Mm. Like when Tom Sandoval is saying in last season that he cheated on Ariana before Raquel, a lot of people think that one of the folks that he cheated with was with Billy Lee. <gasps> Oh yeah. my God, that would make sense why she's always like clinging to him and yeah. stuff. Kind of like a Joe. Yes. With Schwartz. Yes. It's kind of weird. Um, but she shows up and she's talking about how she's going to bring like her friend T to like flirt and date Sandoval, I guess, at Hotel, Hotel Ziggy. Some 25 year old chippy. I'm like, okay, cringe. And then Sandoval's talking to Billy about how he tried to buy Ariana out of the house. So it's right. kind of interesting that he's starting to bring this up and he's like, you know, I'm just waiting on a response from Ariana. Like, I gave her a really good offer. Okay. Allegedly. So he says he emailed an offer like 30 days before this. Um, and he's going to give her half of the value of the house. And she can just walk away, no problems. And then we hear from Ariana. And she's like, um, this is a really sketchy offer. Like, what about the furniture? Which is totaled, I think she said, at $100,000. Yeah, in the after what show. What about all of these outstanding issues? None of these are addressed. And it's just an email. Like, you know I have a lawyer. Why aren't you sending this over to my lawyer? Mm. It's kind of shady. Yeah. It makes me think I'm like, okay, they're, you're trying to spin this like Ariana's the bad guy. Like we said at the beginning of the season, when all of this kind of started coming out, we were like wondering if Ariana was being the shady one because she's not paying the bills and she's not willing to get out of the house. And Lala keeps talking about how she thinks it's weird and sus that Ariana's still holding, to, holding the house and everything. Mm -hmm. But Sandoval seems like a piece of shit with this. Like I think he's just like... I just don't want to have to move. I don't want to have to deal with any of that. Yeah, and I'm just very confused as to how he's going to afford this house, especially uh -huh. if he buys her out at, did they say 3.1 million? I yeah. think that's what he said a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago, Yeah, which means he's going to have to pay her half of the value of the amount of equity that he has in the house. Like, how do you have this money if like you were hurting, right. which was the reason you had to go on tour with Tom Sandoval and the most fucking extras <laughs> so that you could have some money to bankroll your life? Like, how are you going to come up with this money? I really feel like he's probably concocting an offer um, which has her being responsible for shit she shouldn't be responsible mm. for, i.e. the home equity loan yeah. that they took out. She co-signed it. Now, that was dumb. Right. She co-signed on a home equity loan for, I think, $90,000 to inject some money into his bar. Mm -hmm. I think he is wanting, I think actually and factually, he is wanting her to be responsible for half of that. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So I think she's just not going to do it. And she's going to yeah. have her attorneys look over it. And until it's a proper offer, she's not going to respond because she does not have to. And that's fair. Yeah. Queen bee shit right yes. there. Yes. Why would I? Yeah. And speaking of Ariana in this scene, we have her FaceTiming Anne. And Anne's going to the T-Swift concert. And this is where Ariana's like, well, I need an assistant. I'm looking for one. And Anne's like, please, pick me. <laughs> she's like, I want to work for you so bad. I thought that was really cute. Yes. So she's going to snag Anne away from Tom Sandoval, which I'm like, yes. I wonder if she is. And it's it's interesting watching the arc because at the beginning of this season, everybody was a little bit side eyeing Ariana for the way she spoke to Anne. Mm -hmm. But she must be speaking to Anne very respectfully and cultivating a cool relationship with Anne because Anne is 100 percent ready to jump ship from Tom Sandoval. And all of his dirty parties. Oh, cringe yeah. that she has to fucking do the yeah. housekeeping for yeah, because gross. he's such a piece of shit. So I loved that. And I loved how Ariana said hashtag save Anne because I think we said that on a we pod did. like we a did. couple weeks ago. Yeah. So that's really great. And then after this, we have Lala and Schwartz meeting up for ice acai bowls and syringes Why? i don't know who's asking for this relationship like, between these two people no one cares you know that schwartz doesn't like her no it was just last season he was screaming at her at some bar and making fun of her filled lips yeah. and her parenting and so now we're supposed to believe that things have changed so much that you're willing to sit down with her. No, you're filming scenes. Well, they did that healing meditation in Tahoe. Don't you remember? Okay. And they worked on their friendship. God, 
God. Yeah. No, I'm judging that. <laughs> me too. It, I'm just dubious of the entire thing. It doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. And like, I just, I hate Tom Schwartz's simpering affect this season. Just like how he's trying to be the nice guy. Yeah. And he's trying to be so placating for everybody. I'm like, just be who you are. Right. You're a fucking snake. Yeah. You're an awful person. Just show us who you are. We know you're not this guy. Right. He's so fucking fake. Like even with his shit with Joe, like everybody hates the fact that he treats Joe the way that he does mm -hmm. with how he just strings her along and all this stuff. Like we get to it later in the episode and in the after show, a couple people comment on Kristen, it as well. Yeah. yeah. Kristen thinks it's fucked up. So yeah, I don't like him either, but they're sitting there talking about his sobriety and he meant, he mentioned something kind of weird where like Lala's asking him, you know, how is it with sober sex and like, how is it living sober? And he's like, yeah, it's cool or whatever. But like, I enjoy like the occasional bender. I enjoy the occasional drug bender and alcohol bender. It's pretty fun. Like I like the balance and of that. a sober bender. Like he likes immersing himself in the energy of going overboard, whether wow. that's sobriety or whether that's drugs and alcohol. Yike. Yeah. He's a weirdo. And then this is where he starts talking about like the guy's dinner with Jax and how he called out Sandoval and how it ended up being great, blah, blah, blah. And then at some point, Schwartz is like, yeah, you know, I feel like there's a lot of healing energy and like we all are cheaters and we're all, we all fucked up. You know, like even me, I made out with Sheena 12 years ago in Vegas. Right. Drops a bomb. And Lala's like, um, excuse me, what? <laughs> what? Excuse beep, me? Beep. Beep. what are you talking about and he's like yeah i mean like we were in vegas it was a long time ago and we made out like it was no big deal but like i'm the makeout king or whatever he calls himself Cringe. and lala's just like what are you talking about yeah and she's like did you tell katie about it because none of us knew and he's like no i haven't even told katie so now lala goes the next scene well but he does mention that sheena even brought it up to tom right. schwartz over the holidays so right. like a few a months joke. previous like yeah they were joking about it so it's in their consciousness their shared consciousness that this has happened so mm -hmm. when we get to the sheena and katie part when sheena's trying to deny it like i did it was nothing well then why were you joking about it four months five months ago she's a dirty fucking liar. yeah i That's know it. why it's ridiculous and so lala after meeting with Schwartz, she goes over to Katie's house and immediately tells him, yeah. tells her, she's like, yeah, this is what Schwartz just told me. And Katie, I mean, to me, looked pretty devastated. Yeah, she looked hurt. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily surprised. Yeah. Because this has, in fact, happened before. So he's cheated a lot? Well, I think quite a few times, wow. probably. And we see a flashback where they're sitting outside of Vanderpump or Sir or wherever they worked. And She's like, well, somebody said you were making out with somebody and he admits to it. And he's like, well, that's actually a fact. It's true. And you can just see the sadness kind of wash over her. And it's the same kind of sadness, I think, that we're seeing in Lala's kitchen as well. She's totally. like, are you kidding me? Sheena, though? Yeah. And the whole reason why she's upset about it is because Sheena has not told her about this the mm -hmm. whole entire time. And then now trying to act like they're buddy, buddy right. friends. And I totally felt for Katie like this because I'm the kind of person... I'm like, just be upfront with me. I would rather you be honest with me than anything, even if it's going to hurt my feelings and even if I get mad. But if you don't tell me something and I find out about it later on, oh, you're fucking dead to me. Yeah. I hate that shit. Lying by omission. I do not like that, especially if you're trying to be my friend. Right. Fuck you. Yeah. You're fake as fuck. Mm -hmm. I think that's really shitty that Sheena never told her because it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Sheena, when she gets into it at Hotel Ziggy, we'll, we'll talk about it. It's just like so fucked up. Too. It is. And you even hear Lala say in her conversation with Katie, she's like, yeah, I wanted to tell you first because if I tell Sheena first, she's going to start... Um, trying to gaslight and trying to manipulate and trying to t turn it into this pretty thing that it is absolutely not. Because if this fucking happened to me, I'd have a problem with it. This is mm -hmm. Lala. And so Katie is well within her rights to feel some kind of way. And she does. And it's sad because I do think that Katie has been trying to build a bridge and get over it with Sheena because yeah. they have had their run-ins in the past. Right. And like, this is just going to be devastating for any friendship that they're trying to build because sheena cannot be trusted like you do that one time to me i will never trust you again ever much less tell me about it and now you're in my fucking friend group like now i gotta put some things into place so that i can shield myself from you yes you are not safe cody brown not safe walls up <laughs> walls up and it's interesting that lala is like 
kind of turning on Sheena in this moment too, because just last episode she's trying to back Sheena up with regards yeah, to Katie going and hard Ariana. For Sheena. It's kind of crazy. That's what you I'm can saying. just see though that she's just trying to maneuver herself according to storylines. This isn't really an authentic friendship because no. keep in mind, Lala actually bought a house, I think, right next door to Sheena. I think it was in Palm Springs. They also live in the valley in proximity to one another. So you would imagine they've got a very cool friendship. Yeah. But if you're willing to throw your really good girlfriend under the bus like this on camera, I know. then you ain't shit. No. And the friendship ain't shit. Of not not at all. And that's why I was saying like earlier, there's no loyalty. No. There's no trust with any of these people. I would hate being all their friends. Yeah. They all suck. They're doing it for camera time. They're doing it for fame. Facts. No cap. Then we for get, real, for real. <laughs> for real, for real. And then we get to Hotel Ziggy where James is DJing. And there's a few things kind of going yes. on. There's a yes. lot of things going on. So first we start kind of with uh, Joe. Yeah. And the girl's talking shit about Joe like immediately because she's wearing a fucking hat. She's wearing a Tom Tom hat. And who cares? Well, I think Sheena cares because it maybe speaks to an alliance that she has with Tom and Tom. But it's none of your fucking business. And furthermore, last season, weren't you the one when Katie and Tom were first breaking up and separating? You were the one who went running to Tom Schwartz to give him your allegiance and not Mm. Katie. So you always do this kind of shit. But now you want to call Joe out for doing something similar. Now, I realize that Joe ultimately ended up fucking Tom Schwartz. But at the same time, I don't think she was a friend to Katie. I know she was a friend to Kristen, but I don't think Katie and Joe were very close. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just don't feel like Sheena has a reason to judge Joe as harshly as she is. And I also, again, don't think she has a reason to fucking take the hat off and not give it back to her and start talking about like, well, you're a, a, you're a hairstylist. Don't you want to show off your beautiful styling when obviously Joe, her hair, her hair's busted <laughs> and she's got these, you know, jacked up braids and stuff like that. It doesn't look that great. Like just right. let her wear a hat, Sheena. But you want to embarrass her. Yep. You want to call her out and make fun of her. Yeah. And make her fucking cry. Because she feels attacked by all of you guys. Because once Sheeta starts talking about it, all the other girls kind of gang up on her because they don't really like Joe. And again, granted, like I get it, like because Joe's fucking Schwartz and Katie doesn't like that and Katie's never liked Joe and blah, blah, blah. But even Allie does it. Yes, I know. I like, noticed that. Allie went and stood with the rest of the girls after she had gone to dinner with Joe yeah. and they had a really nice time. She read Joe's chart and Joe was really moved. And like they, they seemed... To, to have a connection, like not a deep connection or anything, but like to immediately go over to this den of vipers and start talking about Joe. It's like, oh, Allie, that doesn't look good. But I mean, I, I get it. Whatever. Well, and Allie's young, too. Like, I want to give her the benefit of the doubt there, too, because she's kind of influenced by all of them, too. She's only 24. And she's also on the periphery of the exactly. group. She's not like part of the core membership, probably wants to be a part of that. Yeah. And so she's going to say things in order to to get there but I just thought that was pretty sad and you know Joe ends up leaving she yeah. ends up crying she gets a panic attack or something there's some sort of an anxiety situation mm-hmm. Tom Schwartz follows her out like what's going on Joseph what's wrong? yeah yeah, Calling her so Joseph. fucking weird. But not really helping her, though. No. And also not standing up for her. Mm-hmm. Not like going back into the room and saying, you guys, I know you have your issues with her, but that was really shitty to do. You made her feel really bad. You guys should fucking grow up. Like even having the fucking balls to say something like that, even though I'm sure they'd yell at you and they wouldn't like to hear it. But like, he doesn't stand for anything, dude. No, he doesn't. He's kind of a piece of shit. And like in the after show, he had kind of mentioned that the reason why Joe broke down about it was because she had a bunch of things going on in her personal life too. So it kind of all came to a head. Yeah, but in the moment, you didn't do Joe anything. was saying to Billy Lee, who was also there, like, this is really hurtful. I can yeah. hear what they're saying. She's plugging her <laughs> fingers into her ears. And so in the moment, she's actually traumatized by what the girls are doing. Yeah. Whether she bounces back later in the night doesn't make any difference. So that's exactly. just him trying to mitigate and downplay the issue. Because he doesn't want to have to confront it. No. Because he's a fucking bitch boy. Yes, he is a total bitch boy. And I felt a little bad for Joe because she was talking about how all the girls referred to her as a crackhead and how she's like, that's really offensive to people with ADD. And there's a lot of memes going around already about Joe and being like, well, you kind of act like a crazy person. And I I feel bad about it because Mm -hmm. we've kind of mentioned it. And she seems like a nice enough girl. But when Allie went to the girls and was kind of trying to defend Joe, she's like, well, maybe she's coming from a good place. I think it was Ariana that was like, no, Joe's a piece of shit. Apparently, I don't know if it was in her talking head or if she said it to Allie, but she said 
that Joe's actually a mean girl like the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And I think I wrote it down. It was something like... Yeah, um, Ariana says, before you start giving a shit for bullying Joe, you need to understand that she went to Thanksgiving with me and was in my house hanging out with me when she knew full well that Raquel and Tom were in an affair. So like, I don't feel bad for Joe. Yeah. And she has a point. Yeah. And I'm not trying to defend Joe and the shit she's done. I'm right. just talking about moments. I'm talking about encounters. I'm talking about grow the fuck up. You guys are 40 years old. You guys can use your words and have conversations and or just ignore people. But yeah. don't take hats. Don't laugh at people or talk about their jobs. Sheena, that's just shitty. You're a shitty person. 100%. I was really taken aback by how mean and bitchy she was and it was so gross i'm like you're 40 mm -hmm. like oh my god get a grip like how bad does this look on you but she doesn't care no because she thinks she looks hot and she's like i'm matching the vibe of the night look at my dress everybody look how cute i look okay. like shut up Huh. Don't care. Nobody cares. Then there is the scene with <laughs> Ariana and Katie and Lala sitting down having a conversation. And here mm. comes weird ass, warm with a mustache or warm without a mustache, Tom Sandoval, yeah. to speak directly to Ariana or to attempt to, mm -hmm. asking whether... She got the email with his very generous offer for the home. And the way, though her body language, she's just curled up into herself in a protective stance. Mm -hmm. But the way she fucking looks at him, oh my God, if looks could kill. I know. And she's like, uh, my lawyer has it. And then he goes on and says, well, I just want to make sure because, you know, I sent it over. And she just does not say a word, pays him dust it is so awkward katie looks at lala lala's looking at katie and they're just like holy shit yikes yeah ice queen oh i loved it i i'm sure that bothered sandoval so much because embarrassed him oh yeah and at the beginning of the night he noticed ariana when she came in and she was looking hot yeah okay i mean oh, that dress outfit, was beautiful i'm like damn and her he, body was banging banging he looked at her too he was like oh wow she looks really good mm -hmm. like so i think he wanted to go talk to her partly because he wanted to bother her because he's a fucking narc but i think he was like trying to see if he could get mm -hmm. a little bit of an inch in and she's not giving him no, shit nor should she i love it it's so good it was really great so great i think after this we have katie sitting down with sheena, sheena to yep. confront it which again i i have to say that i respect yeah because open your mouth and have a conversation like, like this is a very incendiary topic like this woman may or may not have made out with your husband at the time and you still have feelings about all of this like this can go left but katie's mature yep she's coming at it with a calm tone mm -hmm. and she's like this is what i heard and can you explain yourself and it's sheena who starts raising her voice yeah and getting all animated and she's like oh my god what what are you what yeah she's trying to act dumb it and was she, nothing it was absolutely nothing and i just didn't even want to acknowledge it because you hated me back then and i just like, didn't want to make things worse and i didn't want to ruin your day and your husband was already cheating on you with a bunch of other girls and i didn't want to add fuel to the fire and all this stupid shit and i'm just like you could have literally just been like hey i know you don't like me but your drunk ass stupid ass husband kissed me against my will in vegas and it was a nothing burger. I had no feelings for it. I don't want to ever talk about it again. Maybe confront Sh Schwartz about it. Like, that's all you had to do. Right. She didn't, though. Well, let's have the conversation. Because according to the footage of all the flashbacks, I mean, Katie could be a hard person to talk to. And at the time that this happened, which I think, again, was around 2014, mm -hmm. Sheena, again, was on the outskirts of the group. We had wow. the power girls being Katie, Kristen, and Stassi. And so if Sheena had gone to Katie and said, hey, this is what happened. I just want to let you know, you know, absolutely not interested, but like I wouldn't want to go another day without you knowing this. Mm -hmm. How would Katie have treated Sheena? I think Katie would have probably still stayed with Schwartz. Yeah. Right? Because she stayed with him through him doing that with multiple other women. Yeah. And I wonder if she would have targeted Sheena. I kind of feel like at the time, 2014 Katie, Tequila Katie, would have probably targeted Sheena. And so I can understand why Sheena wouldn't want to say anything because she's already on the outskirts. They already kind of pick on her. But at the same time, you got to put your big girl panties on. Yep. And you got to do the right thing no matter what the reaction is. I don't think 2024 Katie would target no. Sheena. I think... 2024 Katie is a girl's girl and yeah. she'd be like oh fuck that hoe yep thank you for telling me 
and she would have handled her business. I just don't know how she would have reacted in 2014. But again, I don't think it makes a difference. Sheena should have said something. I agree. I think it would have spoke volumes if Sheena was honest about it back then and just showed her allegiance to Gady and to the girls and stuff and been like, look, I, d- I don't want to ruin your marriage at all. Like I'm engaged. Wasn't she engaged to some dude? She was with Shay. Shay, some yeah. weird guy or whatever. Yeah. So Earth she could have husband, yeah. said that too and been like, you know, I, I didn't want this to happen. Obviously, I don't even want to tell my husband, but I'm going to have to tell him and, and then just go out of that way. And if Katie reacts badly, Katie reacts badly. Right. But like the whole motivation for Sheena not telling her was because she wanted to be in the group and she wanted to be a popular girl and she wanted to sit at the cool girl's table. Like that's literally the whole reason. It wasn't because she wanted to protect her relationships or anything, in my opinion. I think it was purely because she wanted in on the group. I think she did want to protect relationships. I think she wanted to protect relationships with the men, with Tom and Tom. Mm-hmm. Like her allegiance, her alliance is with the guys so Uh, her loyalty is with tom schwartz and not katie so why should i have to tell her Mm, plus she's a bitch good point but sheena doesn't own up to any of it no she doesn't take any responsibility i think katie brings up in this conversation but like why are you guys laughing about it over the holidays right sheena really doesn't have a good answer for that no she doesn't because she's full of shit yeah and i think in that moment on katie's face you can tell she knows it. And I also think Katie's thinking to herself, I can never be this girl's friend. Nope. Like it can never be more than Vanderpump rules co-workers with this girl because I cannot Ever. trust her. Because she's fucking shady. Because if you're going to sit there and say, Sheena, that it was nothing and you wanted to never acknowledge it ever again, why do you bring it up as a joke? Mm-hmm. Because you don't want people An to know about joke. it. An inside joke. Yes. Yeah. Between That's you and me, weird. babe. Yeah, it has me questioning whether it was really just Schwartz forcing himself on her or whether there was something else going on because she's also making out with Ariana that night in Vegas, which is fine, whatever. But like, I can just, I I question everything. I don't trust her. I don't trust Schwartz. And I think it's really shitty for Katie to have to deal with. Agreed. And I feel bad for Katie because now she has to realize even more that her ex-husband was such a piece of shit the whole time. And then the next day after Hotel Ziggy, we have Lala, James and Schwartz hanging out and then Sandoval comes over and this was like all kind of stupid like Lala's talking about some water sommelier thing what is that I don't know she some loves her sparkling thing. water and so she wants to become a leading authoritative voice on water Cringe. and I'm snoring Cringe. don't care this is really just a scene to set up Tom Sandoval asking Lala whether she would be interested to come over to my house tomorrow so you can watch me wail and <laughs> scream into the living room because I'm really working through my problems. I don't think you got it, Lala. Ugh. I'm doing the work. Yeah. I'm doing the work to become a better person and I'd like you to actually come over and witness it so then you could tell everybody else that I'm doing this work. Thank you in advance. Thank yep. you. And Lala has a very mature response to it. She's like, well, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if I want to do it, but let me think on it and maybe I will, but I appreciate the offer. And so then the next day. <laughs> oh my God, this scene where, was crazy oh to God, me. This was so fucking weird. Sandoval's on the fucking floor with headphones and a blindfold and Dr. Wu or Dr. Wu, whatever his name Dr. is. Dr. Wu Wu. Is DJing yeah, some. Woo, woo, woo. He's DJing some binaural beats and stuff and, oh and talking into it's some headphones. To, listen, he's yelling into a microphone. <laughs> it's not like it's a meditation. Like I've actually been um, in hypnotherapy where somebody's got a, a microphone i've got the headphones on and she's taking me deeper and deeper no yeah dr woo 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 (laughs) is like yelling into this microphone tom's lying on the ground with his headphones you could you don't need the headphones you can hear him if you take them up because he's screaming in the middle of your living room (laughs) and he is guiding tom through the process of releasing all of this trauma and energy through a scream a primal scream into the void you know of course lala walks in right at that moment so she can stand and watch just bear witness if you will as sandoval shitting himself and breathing (laughs) undulating (laughs) gyrating and screaming i'm like this is wild i think he literally calls it in his talking head it was an emotional orgasm yeah i'm like you're cringe as fuck bro like that is this is so weird i mean that's great that you want to <laughs> work on yourself and do guided meditation and guided breathing and whatever. Like you used to be in the spiritual scene. Like I mm-hmm. get it. Okay. That's great. But with Sandoval, with these weird people that he's paying to do this on the show, I'm just like, this is cringe. It is entirely performative. And yes. this is where we have to revisit the conversation as to whether the editors are really trying to 
pull off a redemption arc for Tom Sandoval? Or are they sneakily showing how preposterous and ridiculous he is? Mm. Because nobody's buying into it, as we said earlier. Nobody's right. buying into your redemption story. Well, Lala is. Well, are they? I think they're trying to do that because it's advantageous to them and their career. Uh. But like nobody in the audience is buying into Tom Sandoval's rehabilitation. Mm -mm. And I think a lot of that has to do with how this is being edited. I personally mm -hmm. am starting to believe that the editors are doing this on purpose. They oh. are showing him to be the absolute preposterous person that he is, vapid, superficial, not doing the work, not really. Yeah. And I think they are setting Ariana and Katie up to be the queens of the season. Ooh. I mean, I could totally see that because there is a lot of like good edits for Ariana and Katie. Like I know at the beginning of the season, they were trying to like kind of villainize Ariana, but nobody was How? taking it serious. Well, I mean, they were before like with the lawsuits and stuff when that came out and everybody oh. was like, fuck Ariana for not taking his offer and not paying the bills and stuff like that. Okay. That's why. But yeah. Now everybody's seeing it for what it is and being like, Ariana's a queen bitch. Yeah, why Katie's would you? Cool. Why like, would you take that offer? Why would you talk to him? Like, exactly. why, why, why? Yeah. So maybe it is. Maybe they are showing Tom Sandoval for being such a loser because then they show him in the scenes with the singles parties and dating tea and like all this stupid shit that mm -hmm. is typical Makes him Sandoval. look super cringe. Yes. And when you think about the fact that last season, I think they won an Emmy for the Scandoval season. Like the oh, way wow. they put that together... After the cameras were down mm -hmm. and the, the scandal broke and they, they came back into film and the way they started incorporating some of the things that happened after into the episodes as we were watching, like you're, you're, you're talking about very talented editors. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, they're not dumb. No. I don't, I don't know that they really believed that anybody was going to believe that Tom Sandoval was doing the work. I feel like Bravo knows better. Yeah. I feel like they know their audience better than like, say, TLC, mm -hmm. who doesn't care about their audience at all when they platform stupid people like Angela and Michael. Right. So yeah, maybe we'll see. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Just a thought. But then after Sandoval screams his emotional orgasm, then Lala, well, he makes her Lala a latte. And then they go outside and talk. And Lala kind of confronts Sandoval a little bit. But she's nice. Like she's kind of calm she's Tempered, not raising her voice even and she's just being very upfront and being like i just want you to know scandoval was not like the only thing that made me stop being your friend it was everything it was the cherry on top of the shit sunday you were being a piece of shit this entire time but like you know i'm open to us kind of rekindling things a little bit but it's, we'll we'll kind of see like she's right. like i'm kind of putting my distance and sandoval's like sweet yeah awesome I want to be your friend again. Yeah, I think he perceives her as a powerful ally. So yes. he wants her in his corner. 100%. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to something about her. And Katie and Ariana are setting up their sandwiches for everybody to taste. Right. Which they had already done. Last year. Last year. But I'm like, Lala, why are you complaining about that? I know. You're like, yeah, this is the same Caprese sandwich. This is the same sandwich I had last year. Well, then why did you come? Yeah. They want you there to support their endeavor. They're mm -hmm. trying to open the doors. They're, they're in permit hell. Yeah. And so just show up for your friends. Put a fucking smile on your face and don't bitch about it the entire time. I know. It's so yeah. fucking judgy. So hypocritical when she's like, oh, people are so full of shit and they're not transparent. And then I'm mm -hmm. like... You're talking shit about this interaction. Right. These girls are trying to do something for themselves. Like right. be supportive. Like they're trying to support you. God. Yes. So kind of, so ridiculous. But then this is where. It's so funny, dude. Oh my God. DJ so James funny. Kennedy coming from the left with the X Factor. Oh my God. Everybody's sitting there eating sandwiches. So good. I think it was Schwartz that said like, you know, I need kind of like a meteor sandwich or like a men sandwich or whatever. <laughs> and James is like, well, we all know he loves a sloppy Joe. Yeah. And this is because coming a meme now and it's so Is it? fucking funny yes i haven't seen it oh poor oh my joe God. i'll poor show joe. you a thing that i did you see the thing i posted on our story no i'm sorry i'll show it to you reading later. my smutty books oh my god yeah. <laughs> about eating ass <laughs> that was uncensored oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was so fucking funny. That comment was hilarious. It was really, really hilarious. Schwartz gets all embarrassed about it because he knows it's fucking true. And all of, everybody, everybody else doesn't say anything. Well, they're laughing, though, to themselves. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody's laughing. Oh, 1,000%. I'm hollering. It was a zinger. It was great. So and funny. so well-deserved. I mean, I'm telling you, I kind of like James this season. Yeah. I think he's fucking funny. I like how brash he is. He just calls people out and he's kind of crazy. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. 
Sorry, then, I can't dig um, a domestic abuser. Well, it's but, alleged. I mean, I, I, it is all alleged. It's, a rumor. Just, it's very hard for me to cross that Rubicon it, and approve of DJ James Kennedy. But yeah. Okay. So then I think it was still at something about her where Lala takes Ariana to the side and is like, yeah, by the way, I went over to your house today and I saw mm. Sandoval doing his breath work and I talked to him and Ariana's kind of side eyeing her and is like, okay, cool, like whatever. And then Sandoval had told Lala during this interaction about how their dog or Ariana's dog, Maya, got into her room or something and ate a bunch of shit. 500 laxatives. The one that pre- previously had eaten 500 laxatives. Yeah. This time had eaten like chicken skewers or something. But I mean, pause on the five. Who has 500 laxatives? I mean, that's wild. Why does anybody have 500 laxatives? I don't fucking know. And like, why are you letting your dog be around stuff that it can get into? Like, if you know your dog will get into a bunch of shit, like, put it away. Yeah, like, absolutely. It's your problem. It's yes. your fault. And so it sounds like Tom Sandoval is very irresponsible with the dog. And so as Lala's trying to come in on a campaign tip for Tom Sandoval, she's trying yeah. to, like, rally for Tom. Ariana so deftly just curves her and she's like, oh yeah, that guy, the guy who almost fucking killed my dog. Multiple times. The guy who doesn't give a shit about her and locked her in my room. And so she ate this food and these wood skewers and I had to take her to the vet and it's costing me $6,000 hairs. That fucking loser. Yeah. And Lala just shuts up. She's like, oh, yeah. It's like, shut up, Lala. I don't know why we're acting like Sandoval is being a good person or like he's made so much effort in being a good person like ariana just keeps bringing all of this shit up mm-hmm, about what mm-hmm. he does and i'm just like dude and like the with the laxative story i'm like he probably did that too he probably left shit out mm-hmm. and the dog got into it yeah and then he didn't give a shit because with the chicken <laughs> no skewers, pun intended yeah literally didn't give a shit <laughs> and that dog like i don't even know how that dog is alive yeah i don't know either but he sounds extremely irresponsible yeah. and one thing we know about ariana is she loves her animals and she refers to them as her children and i believe her this is how yeah. she regards them and so for tom to just have this wanton disregard for her beloved animals is really sad and no wonder she's as pissed as she is yeah did you hear by the way what? that she i think last week purchased a home for herself for 1.6 million doll hairs wow and she's still in a lawsuit presently with Tom Sandoval trying to figure out how they're going to offload or sell the current house. But she's got enough funds and resources, honey, that she can maintain that house and also purchase a new house, a very beautiful house. And meanwhile, at the end of this, I guarantee you, Tom's going to have to sell that fucking house oh and he's going to end up in the same apartment complex with Kristen and Katie. Oh my God, yes. Back in please. apartment row. But yes, oh Ariana is moving on up. Well, that just proves... Lala, right, because Lala earlier in the episode made a comment about that, too. Like, I don't know why Ariana's holding onto this house with Sandoval. It's fucking weird because she's making all this money. She can afford an apartment. Right. Like, hmm. Right. Well, you never had that problem with Randall because you didn't own anything. Randall owned it all. All you had in common was a baby. And so you have a different kind of an issue, Lala. Not everything is like how you experienced it. Let Ariana take care of her own self. She's a big girl. She can do it. And stop commenting about everybody else's fucking life and their business. It really feels like she's inserting herself into various situations to move along a plot line and a storyline. Yeah. 100%. And then we get to Sir and Lisa Vanderpump's there because... Because why? Katie and Ariana. Because why do we need Lisa Vanderpump? They're bringing her What does she do for the show? Like, she does not need to be on the show. No, she doesn't. Continue, please. No, she doesn't. But she makes the same comment that Lala does about the restaurant in her talking head. She's like, why aren't they open yet? Because of permits. Yeah. You know what it is. And because you didn't help them. Like, you helped Tom and Tom. Exactly. With Tom Tom. Yeah, and the bar, right? Did yes. she help out with them? I don't think she, I don't know that she helped out with Schwartz and Sandy. She had a lot of opinions about it, but she did not want to invest. Okay, but still, Tom, Tom. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Lisa Vanderpump. This whole scene was like stupid. Yeah, because Katie and Ariana tell her about how Sheena and Schwartz made out, and Lisa Vanderpump acts surprised, and then that's it. Like it's like whatever. This whole scene was good because of. What happened at the end with Brock and Schwartz? <laughs> yep. What happened at the end? Because apparently back at Hotel Ziggy Night, at the end of that night, 
Katie and a guy named Max, who was on previous seasons of Vanderpump Rules. You may have remembered him. I think he dated Sheena for a little while, but he got the ick like every other guy on the planet has gotten with Sheena. And um, he ends up going home with Katie. And for whatever reason, Sheena has his location data. And she's so snooping on She's it. snooping on it. And she was checking his location. She knows that he spent the night with Katie, that he was there the next morning. She tells Brock this. And so Brock, with his big fucking head, is standing at the bar with Tom Schwartz and tells Tom Schwartz, by the way, Katie banged Max. Yeah. Your brother, your bro. Your broski. And Schwartz like is just like, really? Max? Max? And he kind of acts surprised, but I feel like low-key, he's hurting a little bit. Yeah, but he has no testosterone, so he can't do anything about it. No, and I'm also like, you can't really be hurt because you did the same fucking shit to her right. How during your marriage. Yeah. Right, so it's like, you can't say anything about it. And it was kind of interesting because in the conversation with Brock, like, Schwartz is saying before all of this, like, I was a piece of shit during my marriage, and I fucked up a lot. You know, granted, like, my feelings about Katie aside, like, I wasn't the best. So I was like, that's interesting. You have a moment of self-reflection, and then you get to hear that your ex-wife fucked your best friend or whatever. I hope that hurts. Yeah, but the way that Brock presents it is really shitty because he's like, there's a whole double standard here. Because remember when Katie told you, Tom Schwartz, that you're not supposed to cavort with any members of the friend group, and then you went and kissed Raquel last season, and Katie got super fucking pissed. Well, why is it okay then for her to then go and fuck Max. Well, first and foremost, it's one year later. Yeah. Tom Schwartz didn't listen to what she requested from him. Right. And flaunted it in front of her face in Mexico that he was kissing Raquel. Mm -hmm. And so then why would she fucking care about how he feels? Brock, it is not a double standard. And also stay out of other people's fucking business. I know. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Who are you? Like, why are you spreading this shit around? And then... Because Sheena probably told him so. Yeah, because, you know, that's what you do when you tell your spouse something. Well, I think they were concocting ahead of time that they were going to drop this bomb on... On this night, although I think mm. Sheena wanted to be the one to do it. I think Brock jumped the gun. And the reason Sheena is so pissed is not because Brock said anything because she would have rather kept it to herself. She wanted to drop the bomb when it was most advantageous for her yes. or when it would actually hurt Katie. Because again, Katie came for her on Hotel Ziggy Night for kissing Tom Schwartz. So I just feel like Sheena was trying to maneuver around that and use it at the best time. Mm. And Brock spoiled her plan. And that's why she's pissed. And so they talk mm-hmm. about it at the table. This is where Lala's getting frustrated. Like, what? You went home with Max? Like, what about that? And oh, and everybody's getting confused. And Katie's just like, well, I didn't give you my consent to know my location, what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It's none of your fucking Why business. are you snooping on me? Why are you invading my pri- privacy? Which is where Sheena's like, I didn't mean to do that. It just so happened to check. Like, oh, I hope he got home safe. Oh, my God. He's not home yet. Yeah, whatever, dude. Right. In the after show, she says the same fucking thing. She has the same story. Like, oh, he's just my friend. I was just looking and I happened to notice. And so I mentioned something to Brock. And then he said something. Shut the fuck up. You're acting dumb and you're playing dumb because you got caught for snooping and you were like you were said she was Mm going to probably bring it up when it was best Mm -hmm. for her and I just think it's so fucking shady and Sheena says that she's got like 56 people's fucking locations which is weird as fuck I don't know how they get their location data it's an iPhone thing like we are Android people so I don't know that we do that that's weird what's up so uh, yeah so she collects people's locations but I guess in order to stop following somebody's location like you have to pick a setting and then the person that you stop following gets a notification oh like Delia has stopped giving a shit about Beatrice's <laughs> location. And so in order to avoid drama, she just continues to amass all of these locations. But wow. I'm just like, I think you're just snooping. Yep. I think you're just in everybody's business. I think you're collecting data so you can use it against people. Yep. And I don't believe you, Sheena, that you're nope. a good person. It's really fucking shady. And like, I felt bad for Katie a little bit because she looked like, mm-hmm. wow, like embarrassed because it seems like it was like this drunken thing that they probably didn't intend to happen. Like they were flirting, whatever, and it just happened. And maybe she didn't want people to know right away. And that's fucking lame that now everybody in the group right. knows. And it's fucking on camera now. And so now Katie has to deal with that. And this is all right after she's dealing with the fact that Sheena and mm-hmm. Schwartz made out 12 years ago. And right before this, Katie had confronted Schwartz about it because he had came over and, you know, dropped off a drink or something and she's like you fucked up dude Mm -hmm. and now what 
Right. Now she looks like an asshole right. because she fucked his, her, his best friend after they're already separated. Right. So right. it's just like, what a mess. And so let me ask you about Lala at the table. When she gets up and she's like, I got to go, guys. Nobody's transparent. Nobody is a real person here. Everybody's just full of shit. Is she in this moment pissed off at Katie? Because Katie did that? Um, it, yeah, it's because she kind of ropes him into it. Like Katie was shady for doing it and not saying anything. But I'm like, girl... Who what cares? are you talking about? Like, why does it matter who Katie's fucking at this point? Well, and I'm like, how were you transparent when you were denying the fact that you were a mistress with fucking right. Toad Man that you were with? And how were you transparent when you were fucking James when he was with Raquel? Right. Oh, God, this group of people, a bunch of degenerates. <laughs> a bunch of hypocrites, Losers. too. Ridiculous. But a good episode. I mean, yeah. We had some good stuff that happened. Oh, yeah. And then we have the previews where Schwartz confronts Katie about fucking Max. So I'm kind of excited to see how that happens. I'm wondering when we get to see the fact that they're dating the same girl. Yeah. Like that's been a preview I don't know. for so many episodes now and we haven't seen it yet. I think it's got to be coming up. Yeah. I hope so. And then Brock says Ariana needs to stop being bitter. And again, Brock, I don't care about your fucking opinion. Right. At all. Yeah. And then you're every- a non motherfucking factor. Yeah. 100%. Your opinion doesn't matter in this situation. Clout goblin. And then we have everybody at the beach hanging out. And Sandoval's oh, yeah. there and Ariana's getting pissed. Yeah. About something that Sandoval's saying. Well, she's like, well, if you guys keep bringing this bitch ass, hoe ass, <laughs> broke ass, ho boy yeah. around me, of course I'm going to be upset. I don't want to fucking talk to him. How many times do I have to tell you I don't want to be a part of it? I don't want to talk to him. I don't want him near me. Just stop fucking doing this shit. So she's starting to reach her limit with this fake friend group and i don't blame her i don't blame her at all and maybe you're right like i think you'd said a couple episodes ago that you think maybe ariana is starting to get out of vpr altogether and maybe that this is the catalyst because mm-hmm. she's got all these fake ass fucking people that are being like right yeah Ariana, you need to stop being such a bitter fucking bitch and you need to be friends with Sandoval. Right. right and foisting him upon her yeah when she you. doesn't want any part of it yeah it's when gotta she be has super her boundaries frustrating yep but it's entertaining it is we will definitely continue to follow we will be back next week for more vanderpump rules yeah uh is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast you better be going to your favorite podcast platform and leaving us a glowing five star review it really helps us grow the pod so thank you so much and until next time please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys